Yeah. Who else do you see? Hey everyone, and welcome back to my channel. I am continuing my journey for preparing for my second baby, and I wanted to share just a few little snippets of life before jumping into some things that I've purchased for this second baby, second pregnancy, second newborn phase, you name it. It's been really important for me to enjoy the small little rituals and routine in my day because they're helping me stay grounded and connected during this very, very busy season of my life. I'm actually currently 36 weeks pregnant as I'm recording this, but the vlog clips that you're seeing are from 32 weeks. So everything is moving fast and it's getting more real every day. Nesting has been such an important part of this journey, but I'm also making sure to take things one step at a time so that I avoid feeling overwhelmed, whether it's tackling work in small doses and really just kind of embracing a lot of the things outside of my control, like having way less work time with my son's daycare closing or us going through a renovation process right towards the end of my pregnancy. Uh, these are things I don't have control over, but the things that I do have control over, like planning out my birth plan, planning out my content plan while I take a little bit of a step back from content for a little bit, these are the things that are within my control. So I've recently been really solidifying my birth plan, which is something that I'll probably talk more about in my nesting part three. I really just want to make this whole experience as smooth as possible and as special as possible and enjoy it while I have it because all I know just as fast as 32 went to 36, 36 is going to flash by and this baby is going to be here and I will be in a completely different transition of life. Speaking of transitions and finding balance and staying grounded, I'd like to thank Aura for sponsoring today's vlog. I've spoken of Aura many times before, but it's my go-to meditation app. I use it almost daily, especially on days where I'm struggling with the overwhelm of everything going on at once. And it's just helped me keep meditation as a daily habit through all of the surface ocean level chaos. It's like what keeps me grounded and rooted. If you haven't heard of Aura before, it's a new mindfulness and sleep app that won the best of Apple award and it's used by over 7 million people. If you imagine Spotify, but for meditation, it's really just like that. It's there for your well-being and your sleep. They have thousands of meditations and stories, and it has been so helpful in my pregnancy journey because they even have amazing pregnancy meditations that have been so empowering and just so helpful. So when you sign up for Aura, you go through a little bit of a quiz process, which is very personalized as well, which helps you really narrow down exactly what kind of meditations will be most helpful for you. So I use them at night when I can't sleep. I use them during the day when I'm just checking in with myself. They have hundreds of expert coaches from diverse backgrounds. And this is a fun new feature. They actually have content available in different languages. Aura has been an absolute game changer for me this year, and I know it will completely change the way that you experience daily meditations too. So I'm encouraging you guys to join me, create your own meditation challenge, your own meditation journey for the summer by using Aura's content. I'm almost certain you will experience the same incredible differences as I have in my mindfulness journey, no matter what chapter of life that you are in. You can get started for free on Aura's website using my special link in the description. And the first 500 people will get a free trial plus an exclusive 25% off, which is going to go fast. So you might as well sign up now if you are thinking of it. So be sure to check out the link in my description. And thank you again to Aura for sponsoring today's video. Hey guys, welcome 
welcome back to another nesting vlog. This is part two. If you guys haven't seen part one, I started the nursery and I've just been slowly ticking things off my list. Today's nesting video is a little bit more self-care focused, but it is currently 10, 15. I am heading to a midwife appointment. My midwife appointments are every two weeks now until I believe 37 or 38 weeks and then they'll be every week. And I know from the last time I vlogged in my car, the audio wasn't the greatest. So I will catch up with you once I make it there. I'm just leaving my appointment and I got my blood work done. We've had to do a little bit of extra blood work just because I've been really low iron B12, uh, kind of low hemoglobin levels. She had to take my blood again today just to see where my like ferritin levels are, my B12 is, and all of that. Uh, especially with, I am currently planning a home birth. Uh, I've talked about this in a coffee talk, but I'm just like, I would love to give birth in the comfort of my home. However, I planned it with Easton too, and I'm very go with the flow. So if at any point my midwife is like, I think we should go to the hospital, I'm cool with that too. So I'm doing the exact same plan for baby two, is planning a home birth, and if anything changes, then I'm just gonna roll with it. Um, so we booked all of the appointments up until mid-July, which is kind of crazy how fast that's happening. <laughs> I actually booked myself a pedicure today too as a little bit of self-care. It's getting a little hard for me to reach down and work on my feet and so i have been getting by but like my feet are a disaster right now so i figured there was an appointment that was really close to my midwife appointment that i could book but my midwife appointment was so quick so i'm actually going to make a little pit stop and pick up some stuff to do the diaper caddy and the little section upstairs that i was showing in one of the spring cleaning vlogs where i have a section and a rocking chair upstairs that i want to have like a little basket of things for too ways that I'm prepping for the actual birthing process, which is a lot of the stuff that we just went through in my midwife appointment. And in general, like what I'm doing, kind of like the care for me postpartum, uh, and obviously in the other episodes of the nesting, we'll do more for baby, but. It's the next day and I figured I would go through what I've purchased so far or just what I purchased yesterday um, and make one of my stations with you guys. Oh, I'm out of breath from going up the stairs. So I'm likely gonna have three stations. So this will be one of them, the one that I'm sitting in right now. This is our loft and it's right outside of our bedroom. And I wanna set up a station right here on this shelf. Um, I'm not gonna use this basket. I just had that there as kind of like a card holder. 
Um, but I got these baskets yesterday from Walmart. They match the rocking chair. Uh, they're super cute. The lighting up here is a little funky just because it's still pretty early in the morning. So the sun's coming through that window right now. So I tried to, I don't know, my microphone's also in the way, but um, I just want to put these two baskets here with a couple of the essentials. Now I don't need to have the exact same essentials in every single spot, but I'm going to have one station that's set here. I'm going to have the trolley downstairs that can move around the whole house, but will probably live in the nursery. And then I just want to have a little basket. That's what I did with Easton is I had a basket that at the end of the day, or if I was coming upstairs for the day, I would fill the basket up with anything that I needed to go beside my bed. But the nice thing about having this station is that I probably won't need too much for the basket. So, so I went through my whole first pregnancy without a haka. I don't know how I did it or why I did it because there was a lot of milk. I produced a lot, so I probably could have benefited from using a hacka. I just never used one. Uh, my son also never really took bottles, my first son, so I don't know if it would have even really helped much, but I decided to get a hack at this time around. I wish I had this for my first. This is a three-in-one nose, nail, and ear picker, which sounds gross, but wow, is this something that I did not know existed and would definitely be beneficial even for my toddler, like getting the like dirt out of his nails after he plays outside. So it's good for dry boogers, under the nail dirt, and earwax. And so I'll probably keep this in the nursery. I don't know if he's gonna use soothers. My first didn't. He never really took to soothers very much, uh, but I figured I would get him some clean new ones. I don't even know if we kept the ones from Easton. I know we kept the thing that connects to the outfit, but I don't know where the soothers are from Easton. So I just got him two and that's all I'm gonna get. And if he likes them, I'll buy more. But if he doesn't, then I didn't invest a whole lot because Easton definitely wasn't a huge fan. Um, these are actually for Easton. I bought a couple things for Easton too. Just some dino toothbrushes. <laughs> he needs a new toothbrush. Uh, he's due for a new one and I figured I would get him some dinosaur ones because he's going through a big dinosaur phase right now. And then this is also kind of for Easton. So this is really cool. Didn't know this existed either. It goes over the faucet or the spout of your tub. So I always get so cautious when Easton's having a bath, like I clean him all up and then I let him play for a while, uh, but he's a little wild. And so this is gonna bring me so much peace of mind to cover up our faucet in the tub with something rubber so that he can't hurt himself. So like I said, this is the first basket that will probably go like that. Basket number two, not to preach middle child syndrome, but I also do remember what it was like to grow up and kind of never have things that were my own and only ever get hand-me-downs from my sister, which I appreciate because now that I'm a parent, I realize that that is most efficient and best for the environment, of course, but there are a couple things that I want to have for just him. And one of them is like his own blanket. Like Easton has blankets that are, especially in the winter time, they're like his blankets. They're the ones that he gravitates towards most. So I did get him just one blanket. It's just this really nice green, sage blanket so this will go in the nursery after i wash it and then i did pick up i talked about this in i just did a newborn essentials video on my coffee talk channel but flannel blankets these are the best for swaddling at least in my opinion i hated the muslin ones i felt like the material wasn't comfortable the east had never seemed comfortable being swaddled in muslin so i like to get cotton we have like a good pile of these that we also used as burp cloths so they're all destroyed so i figured i would get there's only five in this pack but they also fit the forest theme and i just picked up some clean ones for him to be swaddled in and then we're just going to use the same ones that we used for east and for burp cloths this Again, wish I had this for my first. <laughs> and it is for, basically it takes off like dry skin and such, especially on the head. Uh, Easton had pretty bad cradle clap and I don't know if baby two will, but just in case I figured I would get a little scrubber for the bath. And then I got a couple little things for me and technically for baby two. So these are things that I do wanna keep at my station. The first is this balm. This is an organic, all-purpose, fragrance-free balm. The nice thing is, is that I can use it for a baby, I can use it for Easton, and I can use it for me. So it's basically like a lotion. Um, I haven't opened it yet, and I chose fragrance-free, obviously.
obviously, because I'm going to be using it on the baby too. Um, but just to keep this at my station, whether I need to just lotion up my hands or if I need to lotion up the baby or if Easton needs a little bit of lotion as well. I also picked up some hand sanitizer, just like a little travel one, uh, some actual hand cream that does have a scent. So one of these will likely go in this station. One will likely go in the trolley downstairs except this is like specifically for adults. I wouldn't use this one on the baby. It just smells really nice and I chose it for that reason. And then last but not least, just to be a little extra, I got a face mist. So when you are nap trapped, you end up sitting in chairs for a very long time and it can be nice to have a couple little self-care things for you. And so having a nice face mist just to like freshen up, especially if it's like the middle of the night and I'm feeling tired, I can like spritz my face and, you know, lotion up my hands and then I, I'll likely keep a set of headphones here and a set of headphones at the trolley downstairs as well. Uh, I basically lived with my AirPods when I had Easton, where if, especially through the night, if he was waking up for longer feeds or whatever, I would just pop in my headphones and listen to music or a podcast or put on a show on my phone. And that way I wasn't keeping Ryan awake. We are co-sleeping with Easton. So odds are when baby wakes up through the night, I'm probably gonna come out here to do feedings and yeah, just kind of have a little station set up that I can pamper myself, watch my show, feed my baby, and then go back to bed. So I'm gonna do this basket for me, this basket for baby. 